hey there everyone laurel here with another video here in my 25 days of christmas video series today is day 15 and we're going to be looking at textured backgrounds today and to create these cards and the texture on those backgrounds i'm going to be using the brutus monroe glitter glaze they come in a variety of colors i'm going to work with five to six colors today and a couple different stencils and dies the first is the fir tree ornament stencil from Alexander Ronke or something like that. It's a German company and I love this tree stencil. This is beautiful. This is the red glitter glaze. I believe it's called Scarlet and I'm just going to apply that with a palette knife very carefully going pretty slow. This is a very detailed stencil so I wanted to make sure that all of that glitter glaze got in all the nooks and crannies of that stencil. Now, this glitter glaze is very smooth. It's almost like a really thick tinted mayonnaise. And you can see little bits of the glitter in there, but it's not textury or sandy as some of the embossing pastes that I've used in the past. This also dries very quickly. I'm going in with emerald here, by the way. Uh, but this glitter glaze also dries quickly. I, I glittered all of my backgrounds you're going to see me do. And uh, then I went and had a sandwich and came back and they were good and dry. So I love this stuff. It goes on very smooth. It's, it's because there's not a lot of texture in there. Um, you're able to just apply it very smooth without all the bumpiness from, from some of the other paste that I've used in the past. So I love this stuff. I think it's beautiful. So when I peel off the stencil, oop, I got to do the star, the star of the tree. So I'm going to go in and add a little dab of that uh, gold there. I <laughs> can't forget the star. I have a big hat. It looks like a cat in a hat for the top of my tree and my kids always beg for a star. Uh, so here's a look at that as I peel off the stencil. And then to assemble this card, I just adhered a die cut from the ton stamps. And this card is done. It is beautiful and textury and shiny and sparkly and flat so you can put it through the mail without any problems. You got a little bit of dimension from that glaze too. Now this is a piece of cardstock that I applied some emerald glitter glaze to and let it dry. So I've already got one uh, layer of the green glaze. Now I'm going in with that same stencil and applying the gold right over the dried green. I, was, I didn't know how it was gonna look um, with one glaze on top of another, but I'm gonna tell you right now, this is absolutely beautiful stuff. Now, if you don't have a palette knife, you can use a plastic knife or fold up a piece of cardstock and use the crease part, anything that you can smooth, any kind of applicator that you can use to kind of smear this on, like icing on a cake. So I peeled up that stencil and again, let that dry and it is absolutely beautiful. Take a look, look at that. Can you even? So I just adhered another die cut right over the top of that to complete this card. Moving on to the third card for this video here. Uh, this is a stencil from Tim Holtz. If you look carefully, you can see that there is some printed trees on the stencil as well as the, you know, the holes through the stencil. This is kind of intended to be a layering stencil. So I went ahead and already stenciled on some raspberry glitter glaze through the stencil, let it dry. And now I'm lining up the picture that is printed on that stencil with the trees the already glazed trees so I'm kind of lining it up and then I'm then it's going to align the other trees perfectly it does all the work for you I'm going to adhere some purple tape to the back side so I'm not blocking any of the design on the front so I basically have the printed image of the stencil lined up over the trees that have already have the glitter glaze on it and that is going to leave the opening of the other trees perfectly aligned for you so that's why it's called the shifter tree stencil that's why it's one of it's also a layering stencil so i'm able to take two different colors here this is a beautiful color berry i believe it's called it's a nice deep blue and it's just amazing because the color that you take out of the jar and the color that you're adhering down um, sometimes you don't think it's going to get the results that you're going to get. For the instance, the gold looked brown, but it dries beautiful gold. And this blue is absolutely stunning. It's gorgeous. So to finish off this card, I used some die cuts from Catherine Pooler. Again, all the supplies are listed below in the YouTube description. Kind of a silhouette type scene. I'm keeping everything black with the exception of the little snowman there. I cut a little strip of black cardstock and adhered it down to kind of act as a ground for my snowman and my little deer and tree. And I've got to give the snowman some accessories, of course. And uh, 
these images are things I actually pre-cut ahead of time. It was super early one morning. I was like 4 a.m. I wasn't feeling especially creative. So I die cut, stamped, colored a whole bunch of things, and I have them all in like a little jar on my desk. So I'm ready to use them. And it really made pulling these cards together quickly because I already had done all the pre-work of die cutting and coloring and so forth. So if you're not feeling especially creative at certain times, think about doing that and you can get a jump start on your cards. So here's a look at that, look at that two-tone, look at that raspberry and that blue. Oh, it is so pretty and sparkly and I love it. Yum, 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 yum. All right, let's finish up the video with a fourth and final card. So for this card, I decided to create my own stencil. This is a die cut cover plate from the 10 stamps. It's the Snowflake layering cover plate dies. There's two of them and you can die cut them and layer them together. I decided to take that one die cut and die cut it obviously and use that as a stencil. So I used some unicorn horn glitter glaze right through that negative piece to create those snowflakes on that background. And this card I just freehanded cut a little snowbank, if you will, <laughs> for that background. And I'll adhere that down. And again, there's little images there are things I cut and colored, I don't know, a week or two ago. <laughs> They're just sitting in a bowl ready to uh, be brought to life here. So I'll go ahead and adhere the little snow down that I freehanded there and cut off the excess and start assembling the card here. I'm using this Gina K Connect glue, which is fantastic. And it's actually the glue I've been using this entire video for all the little intricate die cuts. I just add little bits to the back. It goes on white but dries clear and it's very, very strong and it has that precision tip. So I'm a huge fan of this Connect glue and I haven't had a lot of clogging issues so far. I've been using it for about a month now. So assembling this car, I got my little ho ho ho, even though there's no Santa there, there is nowhere in the world does it say that this little Frosty the Snowman can't say ho 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 you know what I'm saying so this is some nouveau accents it's snow flaw snow fall and I'm just adhering that so I have a look a little bit of snow there and yeah bada bang bada boom I've been saying that a lot lately bada bang bada boom but these glazes are out of this world fantastic you can use them to create your own glitter cardstock use them through stencils uh, use them on die cuts to create embellishments. There's a lot that you can do with this and they don't come off on your hand. You don't get specks of glitter all over yourself, which is a huge pro in my book because <laughs> I don't like glitter. I don't use glitter. I don't know if you follow me or not, but I don't use glitter because it binds me. It haunts me. It taunts me around the house. It gets up my nose. So I don't typically use glitter uh, at all, really. <laughs> so this I love this stuff. This is fantastic. So we have now completed day 15. Can you believe it? 15 days of videos. 10 days left before my video series is up. So I hope you're hanging with me. I hope you're enjoying it and not getting sick of me yet. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.